Ken Whiting here with Paddle TV and in this video we're going to talk about the difference between a $300 kayak and a $1,600 kayak. Before we do though, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already because we got lots more paddling tips, gear reviews and paddling adventures coming your way. So. The difference between a $300 and a $1,600 kayak, chances are you're not actually going to be trying to decide what to buy, the $1,600 or the $300. You're probably going to be uh, picking some, uh, choosing between kayaks that are a bit closer in price. But I wanted to show two extremes of sit on top kayaks to show um, what you get at the high end for $1,600 and what you get at the very base model for a $300 kayak. Now, there's lots of kayaks in between that, that work their way up to what this $1,600 uh, kayak has, and you just have to decide what's most important to you. So let's start with the $300 kayak here. This is the Pelican Boost 100. Now, the, I actually just bought this kayak for this video, and I don't know if I'll ever actually use it because <laughs> This isn't the type of kayak I would enjoy using because I know I'm not going to be comfortable in it. And that's of huge importance to me. This kayak isn't designed for comfort. What this kayak is designed for is for getting someone on the water who just wants to, to get out there, be outdoors, enjoy, uh, uh, enjoy the, the environment for a short period of time. Not worried about covering a lot of distance. Not worried about um, stuff bringing along a lot of gear. Not worried about much, except just getting out on the water and enjoying friends, family, and, and the water. Uh, this, what makes this thing $300, first of all, is uh, what contributes to that at least, is that it's manufactured uh, through blow molding, which just doesn't allow as much detail when they make this thing. Not nearly as much as a roto molded kayak. Now, starting from the very front here, the grab handles are very simple, very, um, you know, they're not durable. These are going to crack at some point if you drop them the wrong way or, or even just with sun, uh, that's going to end up cracking. And you can see it's just attached by a rope through a drilled in hole at the front. So uh, it's, an, it's a weak point. If it gets used a ton, something's going to fail there. But most people with kayaks like this don't use them a ton. So that's you know, this is why this is a good option for someone who's just going to use a kayak a couple times, again, just to get out in the water. Now, moving back, there's nothing really up front at all. Uh, you have these footwells, they're called. Now, these footwells are uh, f to accommodate paddlers of different heights. Um, it depends, you can put, you know, whatever's most comfortable, put your foot in that position. Now. I personally can't stand footwells. I would avoid a kayak with footwells like the Plague because there's nothing comfortable about a kayak with footwells. It's worth spending a little bit more money and there are some, uh, you know, a small upgrade up would be a kayak that has actual foot pedals like the, uh, I'll show you on the other kayak. Moving down, the seat. Now, the seat on this boat is, it's got a nice back support. I, that that's that's good to have that back support um, there's no padding for your butt itself and there's two problems there is a your butt's going to get sore but you're also but your butt's going to be wet there's nothing keeping you off the bottom of the kayak there's a couple of scupper holes here right in the seat too so water is going to splash up uh, there's a couple of scupper holes two scupper holes here and there's two back here what are scupper holes if you don't know about scupper holes what they are is they let the water out any water that splashes onto this boat uh, the water that passes through the kayak and um, right there it empties through the scupper holes now this one has a total of six scupper holes if you get any significant water in this in this boat that's going to drain very slowly most uh, higher end boats will have more scupper, scupper holes to drain more quickly. Now the problem with this seat is how it's attached here to the, uh, to the side of the boat. This is a recipe for disaster and it's not going to take much. A big person sitting in this kayak leaning back uh, or just time, a bit of wear and this is going to pull out. You're going to be left with a hole in the kayak. 
right there. Uh, again, it's not a problem if you just need a kayak to every once in a while at the cottage to go out and just go for a go for a cruise. Not a big deal, and not worth spending sixteen hundred dollars on. But you know, this is one of the problems you you have is if you're, you're going to use it, it's going to fail. In the back, you have a tank well. Uh, a tank well is just an area to store your gear, and and these bungees let you uh, hold some gear down, some dry a dry bag, or if you want to bring some fishing some fishing gear. And I guess last, you have a drain plug back here, so any if the, any water gets in the kayak, you can uh, drain it out. That's it. That's a very bare bones three hundred dollar kayak. It'll do the trick. It'll float, and you can paddle it. It's not going to paddle great though. It's not going to go fast. It's not going to. It should be stable enough that you're comfortable and confident. And I haven't actually tried this one, but um, it should be. If you're not too big, this isn't a big person's boat. Um, it should should uh, instill some confidence in you. Now, a sixteen hundred dollar sit on top kayak. This is the Jackson Kayak Kusa HD, and this is. Although it's an all-round kayak, uh, sit-on-top kayak, it really is designed for fishing. This is a kayak fishing machine. And the reason it's a, I mean, there's a variety of things that make it a kayak fishing machine. And let's walk through the boat, uh, starting right at the front. So up front, rather than the, the that little handle on the, the boost, this one, has a solid, uh, almost integrated handle that, I mean, that's going to, that's not going to fail. That's not going to fail anytime soon. Um, you have, these are rod protectors. And so what you can actually do is you put your rods, lie your rods on the side of the boat here. You snap, snap that over your rod and then your rod tips go into there to protect them. So when you're paddling down the river, they're not going to catch and break your rods. Uh, so that's a nice fishing feature. You have a hatch here. This hatch gives you access to the hole inside of the boat and a good place to just store gear. You can't expect the inside of a boat, any sit on, uh, sit on top kayak to be dry, but this is a good place to put dry bags with your gear for overnight trips or extra fishing gear. Now this piece of material right here, this is for your paddle, a to paddle stow. So you literally just slide your paddle blade under there and now it's held in place while you're fishing. Uh, moving down, you have this whole uh, box here. Well, you've got a, a little hatch here for whatever you want to put gear you want to put in that. But this also is for, hey, look at the ladybugs. <laughs> um, uh, for mounting things like, this is a great place to mount things like uh, fish finder, uh, electronics for your, for your fishing. Um, it can also just be used as general storage. These are the foot pedals that I was talking about, adjustable foot pedals, much more comfortable uh, than the foot wells and much more adjustable than the foot wells, accommodate paddlers of any, of any size. Moving on back even more, now that we've got the seat. So this is where the biggest comfort factor here, the biggest difference between the cheap kayak and this kayak. This seat is, it's elevated, but it's also made from a quick drying, breathable fabric. It's got an uh, adjustable lumbar support in it. It's fully adjustable. It also has two sitting positions. It has a high, high position and it has oh, the low position. And the low position is great. It lowers your center of gravity, makes you more stable. The high position is great when you're fishing and you want the higher vantage point. It also tends to be more comfortable sitting position when your butt is up and your feet are down. It's more like a natural sitting position. Uh, your center of gravity is a little bit higher, but in a boat that's this big and stable, that doesn't tend to be a problem unless you're in rough conditions. Um, on the side, it has the 
the rod or paddle stow features there. It has storage here for tackle boxes or whatever else you want to bring. It's got a couple of integrated rod holders right here and it has um, the, uh, a nice deep tank well with, uh, with, with bungees but also with gear tracks. This, these, all these pieces here are gear tracks and there's more gear tracks up at the front here. And if you look at these gear tracks right here up at the front, this is how it works. So what has been added to this boat is this is a, uh, a Yak Attack Roto Clip, I believe it's called. It's for your, uh, holding a paddle. So it just uses a simple T-bolt that you can slide on to wherever you need it. You spin it to tighten it up. Boom, it's locked in. And you can get, there's almost limitless number of accessories that fit into these gear tracks. And what that means is with these gear tracks mounted all over this kayak, you can put anything you want at any different point on this kayak. You can put a paddle holder, you can put rod holders here, you can put a drink holder, you could put a GPS holder or a phone holder. I mean, the sky's the limit of how you customize this kayak. Um, the other nice thing which is about this kayak too, it's a simple thing, is the, the handles on the side of the kayak so that you don't just pick it up from the ends. One person can grab it, although it's heavy can grab it uh, from the side and carry it, at least move the kayak. Whereas the other kayak, it has actually nowhere to grab it here. There's not even a lip to grab. So you need, even though this is a much lighter kayak than this kayak, you need two people to carry this thing uh, simply because there's nothing to grab onto in the middle of the kayak. Uh, how they'll paddle, I mean, they're both not designed for speed. They are, um, these are designed for, for stability, both these kayaks. They're designed to get out on the water and to, to be stable. This is designed to be um, a stable platform to do any type of fishing that you want from. So uh, neither are going to be speed machines. Uh, Comfort-wise, much more comfortable, this kayak. That's what you're going to pay for. Durability-wise, much more durable. This is a boat you can use daily for seasons, num you know, season upon season, and it's going to keep working. This one, if you used it a lot, it's gonna start falling apart. Uh, and that's about it. Um, like I said, there's, these are kind of the two extremes. The cheapest and not the most expensive, but an expensive sit on top kayak. There's so many different uh, options in between the $300 and $1,600 and it really comes down to what's important for you. How much are you going to use the kayak? What's your budget? And uh, you really having a good grip on your budget and what's most important, what type of paddling you're going to do, go to your local paddle sports retailer, your specialty paddle sports retailer, ask them and they'll be able to put you in the right boat for your budget and your style of paddling. That's about it for me. I'm Ken Whiting with Paddle TV. Please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know, um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm gonna answer them as quick as I can. And stay tuned, because we got lots more paddling tips, gear reviews, and uh, paddling adventures. In fact, gear reviews, I'm gonna be reviewing a ton of different kayaks throughout the summer. So uh, stay tuned for those and we'll see you again.